Hey everyone today. We're talking about the first Bulgarian Empire, a powerful medieval state that ruled southeastern Europe between the 7th and 11th centuries. It all started around 680 to 681 AD, when a group of people called the Bulgars, led by their leader Asparo, moved south to the northeastern Balkans. They didn't just settle quietly, they defeated the Byzantine army, led by Emperor Constantine IV, and secured the right to live south of the Danube. Some believe they might have had help from local South Slavic tribes in their victory. This marked the birth of the first Bulgarian Empire. By the 9th and 10th centuries, Bulgaria was thriving. At its peak, its territory stretched from the Danube bend to the Black Sea, and from the Dnieper River to the Adriatic Sea. It became a major player in the region, often competing with the mighty Byzantine Empire. The relationship between the two was like a roller coaster, sometimes allies, sometimes bitter enemies. One notable alliance came during the Second Arab Siege of Constantinople, when the Bulgarian army stepped in, broke the siege, and prevented an Arab invasion of southeastern Europe. As Bulgaria grew stronger, it expanded its territory. After the collapse of the Avar Khaganate, it pushed northwest into the Pannonian Plain and fended off various threats from groups like the Pechenegs, Cumans, and Magyars. In fact, Bulgaria's victory over the Magyars forced them to settle permanently in Pannonia. Over time, the Bulgars blended with the local Slavic population, adopting the Slavic language and forming the Bulgarian nation. By the 10th century, the term Bulgarian became widely used to describe the people of this growing empire. Another critical development during this period was the introduction of Old Church Slavonic literacy, which helped preserve the South Slavic culture and strengthen Bulgarian identity. And now let's dive back into the story of early Bulgaria. It's the late 7th century, and the Bulgars, led by Asparu, have settled in the Danube Delta. This was no random choice. The area had fertile lands and plenty of grazing for their herds, crucial for their nomadic way of life. But it wasn't exactly a free real estate situation. This land was technically under the Byzantine Empire's control. Now, the Byzantine Emperor at the time, Constantine IV, wasn't thrilled about this arrangement. Fresh off his victories against the Arabs, he turned his attention to the Bulgars. In 680, he assembled a massive force, both land and sea, to drive them out. But when the two sides met at Anglos, a swampy, fortified area in the delta, it was a disaster for the Byzantines. Osparu's forces outmaneuvered and defeated them. It wasn't just a loss, it was humiliating. By 681, the Byzantines were forced into a peace treaty, officially recognizing Bulgaria as an independent state. And get this, they even had to pay tribute. For the Byzantines, who were used to everyone paying them tribute, this was a huge blow to their pride. From there, Asparo began organizing the new Bulgarian state. Interestingly, the local Slavic tribes played a key role. While the Bulgars were the political and military leaders, they worked with the Slavs for mutual benefit. The Slavs retained their customs and local chiefs, but paid taxes and provided foot soldiers when needed. This kind of cooperation helped Bulgaria solidify its position despite the challenges. Unfortunately, Asparu's reign didn't end on a high note. Around 700 he died fighting the Khazars in the northeast. But his successor, Khan Turval, took the reins and didn't miss a beat. Turville was a sharp leader who saw an opportunity when the deposed Byzantine Emperor Justinian II came knocking for help. In exchange for aiding Justinian's comeback, Turville secured territory in Thrace, marking Bulgaria's first expansion south of the Balkans. But alliances with Byzantium were always shaky at best. Just a few years later, Justinian tried to take back the land he'd ceded. Bad move. Turville's forces crushed the Byzantine army at Anchialis, securing Bulgaria's position even further. Turville even helped fend off the Arab siege of Constantinople in 717-718, a victory that historians credit with halting Arab advances into Europe. Despite these successes, 
Bulgaria faced its fair share of internal struggles, especially after Khan Savar's death around 738. The ruling Dulo clan faded out, and the state spiraled into political chaos. Over 15 years, Bulgaria saw seven rulers, most of whom met violent ends. It was a dangerous time, with factions within the elite vying for power, some pushing for peace with Byzantium, others for war. The Byzantine Emperor Constantine V took full advantage of this instability, launching nine major campaigns against Bulgaria. While he scored several victories, like at Anchialis and Marcelli, he couldn't conquer the resilient Bulgarians. His campaigns caused devastation, but also had an unintended effect. They united Bulgaria's warring factions. By the time Constantine died in 775, Bulgaria had weathered the storm and emerged more consolidated than ever. The turning point came under Khan Kardam, who secured a significant victory at Marseille in 792. This marked the end of internal crises and the beginning of a new era of stability and strength for Bulgaria. And now the golden age of Bulgaria under Simeon the Great saw the nation asserting dominance in the Balkans. But as all good things go, it wasn't without challenges. When the Byzantines, in a bid to weaken Bulgaria's economic footing, shifted the Bulgarian market from Constantinople to Thessaloniki, Simeon wasn't one to sit back. He declared war, defeating the Byzantine forces in Thrace. The Byzantines, desperate for an upper hand, turned to the Magyars for help. Initially, the Magyars were successful, defeating the Bulgarians twice and even pillaging parts of Dobrudza. But Simeon, ever the strategist, allied with the Pechenegs and delivered a crushing blow to the Magyars near the southern Bug River. This defeat was catastrophic for the Magyars, forcing them to migrate westward to what is now Hungary. In 896, Simeon cemented Bulgaria's dominance with a decisive victory at the Battle of Bulgarofagon, forcing the Byzantines to sue for peace. The treaty was a win for Bulgaria, it re-established trade privileges and compelled the Byzantines to pay tribute. Although Simeon broke the treaty after sacking Thessaloniki in 904, his ambitions were clear. He sought to be recognized as emperor and envisioned a grand Bulgarian Roman state with Constantinople as its crown jewel. His victories at Achelous in 917 and subsequent battles showcased Bulgaria's military supremacy. Despite Byzantine attempts to counterattack, including inciting the Serbs and Croats against Bulgaria, Simeon remained undeterred. However, his ambitions to conquer Constantinople were hindered by the lack of naval power. His attempt to ally with the Fatimid Caliphate for naval support was thwarted when Byzantine diplomacy intercepted and neutralized the negotiations. Simeon's death in 927 marked the end of an era. By then, Bulgaria controlled most of the Balkans but couldn't achieve its dream of taking Constantinople. His successor, Peter I, negotiated peace with the Byzantines, marrying Emperor Romanus's granddaughter to solidify the treaty. This ushered in four decades of relative peace and stability, a period often referred to as Bulgaria's Golden Age. Economically and culturally, the nation thrived, but cracks began to show. Bulgaria's geographical position, surrounded by rising powers like the Magyars, Pechenegs, and Kievan Rus, made peace a fragile luxury. Magyar raids between 934 and 965 weakened the country's defenses and internal social tensions, including the rise of the heretical Bogomilism movement, signaled unrest. The Byzantines, now regaining strength under leaders like John I, Simiskis, saw an opportunity to reassert control. In 968, they incited the Kievan Rus Prince Sviatoslav, the first to invade Bulgaria, which led to catastrophic losses for the Bulgarians. By the time Peter I abdicated in 969, leaving the throne to his son Boris II, Bulgaria's position was dire. Sviatoslav's occupation of key Bulgarian territories prompted Byzantine intervention. Emperor John I, Tsimiskis, defeated Sviatoslav, effectively turning eastern Bulgaria into a Byzantine province. 
However, the western regions, under the leadership of the Kumtapuli brothers, resisted fiercely. The youngest, Samuel, emerged as the central figure in the fight for independence. Samuel's early victories, including the pivotal defeat of Emperor Basil II at the gates of Trajan in 986, brought hope. For a time he recaptured lost territories and expanded Bulgaria's reach deep into the Balkans, even annexing Thessaly and Epirus. But by 1000, the tides began to turn. Basil II, later known as the Bulgar Slayer, launched relentless campaigns that systematically dismantled Bulgarian defenses. The decisive blow came at the Battle of Clydeon in 1014, where thousands of Bulgarian soldiers were blinded, leaving Samuel devastated. He reportedly suffered a heart attack upon seeing his blinded men and died shortly after. Though resistance lingered under leaders like Gabriel Radomir and Ivan Vladislav, by 1018, Bulgaria fell under Byzantine control. The Bulgarian aristocracy retained some privileges, but the nation's autonomy was gone. It wasn't until 1185, under the leadership of the Assen and Peter brothers, that Bulgaria would regain its independence and establish the Second Bulgarian Empire. 